Well, how do you do, everybody? Excuse my voice. I'm still sick. John Sims at Sims Forge sent me this cool little piece of bloomery steel. And even though it looks like a lot of steel, we got a lot of work to do. We're going to have to clean it up, fold it a couple more times because it's only got eight folds in it right now. And it's awfully squishy stuff, if I read correctly. So it's probably going to reduce in size. At any rate, let's spark test it and see what we get. I don't know if it's all high carbon, but there's definitely some high carbon in there. We'll polish this up and put it under the microscope. Here it is all etched up, and that looks like about eight layers to me. I don't know. Very heterogeneous, very large crystals and grains. It's going to be interesting to see what happens. So let's put it in the forge. Let's quench it, and then I want to take another look at it. We'll polish it again, etch it again, and look at it under the microscope one more time. These grains refined nicely in a lot of cases, not all cases, but uh, it's pretty sweet. Still a very heterogeneous piece of metal, though. I wanted a better understanding of what I was dealing with, so we cleaned it up a little bit in preparation for forging and dirty welding. And as you can see, there's still some lamination issues going on there. I sensed that we can grind through quite a bit of that before we had something usable, so we're just going to roll with what we got. This is Bo Blankenship. He does a lot of good sheath work for me, and he's a great guy. And he's helped me out today. He's uh, going to hold while I strike and vice versa. Bo's going to get after it on the press here, and we'll get it formed up and shaped, and I think when it's more in an elongated form, I'll sort of have a better idea in my own head about what we have to work with and what sort of knife we can make. I think we can work with that. That should be enough material. Here it is polished and etched, and let's look at it under a microscope. This should be about 32 layers. I don't think we can do many more folds than this, though. So you can see there's like an inclusion on this side or delamination. It's probably an inclusion. There's one sort of on this end. This end would be the tang if, if we do this. This side actually looks pretty clean. And so does this. So had we enough material, we would have flattened this out each time, grind the surfaces flat and cleaned them up, then cut it, 
folded it. We probably could have got a few more layers in there. But every time you stop to um, grind surfaces clean and cut it and weld it, you lose a lot of material. So that's why we sort of did the quote-unquote dirty welding on the anvil because this is barely enough to make a knife with and we, we sort of wanted to make something with this. So, you know, that's a decision we made. It might not have been the right one. We thought about cutting up a piece of steel, you know, and, and just sort of forge welding it to the edge here and having a nice uniform piece of mono steel be the cutting edge. But that would sort of take away from the spirit of the project. And so we decided really not to do that, even though it would be quite easy to do. We'll just uh, push ahead with what we got. Here we go with some normalization cycles. So after cleaning this up, the spine just does not look acceptable. There's just too many little gaps in there. It's a small chance we're actually fixing these if they're very superficial, but chances are we're really just putting a band-aid here on a deeper problem. But, you know, for the sake of getting this knife done, and it's such a unique knife that I think we should just go ahead and do it and um, not worry too much about it. As long as we make an effort, you know, cutting edge is clean. That's the most important thing. Right, the plan is to put some flux in those crevices and then try to weld them shut. Since we had to go back and do more forge welding, we have to do more normalization cycles. So here they go.
Before we harden the blade, I have to sort out what's going on with the shoulders where it meets the handle. So I'm going to put on a carbide file guide. We'll get a lot of this done here on the grinder, but we are going to have to finish it up with a file and clean it up. Let's take a look at that spine area that we were working on. and It actually did okay. I think we got rid of most of that stuff. So it's pretty hard out of the quench, but I've never tempered this steel before, bloom steel, so I don't know what I'm doing. I tempered it at 350 degrees and it's a little too hard. There's a couple spots that dig, which worries me. Then I did 375, still pretty hard. Then I actually did 390, the camera didn't capture, I was all out of focus. So at any rate, I didn't put that on it. 390 softened it too much. So I had to go reheat treat it and then I just took it to 375 and left it. So you can see there's some bad welds in here. You know, we just didn't take the time to clean that up trying to save material. That's probably a mistake, but even then, you know, I think we should have done a little better than this. But the edge is clean, so is it a fail? I don't know. Not what I wanted, but you know what? This is still gonna be a really cool knife. So let's get it done.
Remember, the contrast here isn't from alloys. It's not from a high nickel steel that still has good carbon content with a darker sort of high carbon manganese rich steel. The difference in contrast here with etching is purely from carbon content. So you have sort of this dark area, the black area, which is probably very high carbon steel or high carbon steel. And then these lower contrasting areas, which are clearly low carbon steel or mild steel, maybe even some iron in there. And so clearly, you know, along the edge here is a very good piece of carbon steel, some mild steel or low carbon steel and more high carbon steel. So that's, that's what I think the problem is with the cutting. I've, I've been over this edge and over this edge, and this is just as good as it gets. Man, what an interesting material and a fun, fun project. Thanks to John Sims. You guys have a good one. <laughs>